All right, let's have a look at this process called the limiting chord process, or sometimes referred to as first principles. Okay, as it says in the title there, limiting chord process, we want to limit the chord, which means we want to reduce a chord. Now, a chord is just a line segment that's joined between two points on a circle, or in this case, we're going to use a curved surface. So we're looking at a function here. That function there, we can take a point, we can call it x, and then our y value would refer to as f of x. Now let's choose a second point that has a distance of h, so we'd call that x plus h, which means our function notation would replace with the x there, the y value, the corresponding um, y value would be f of x plus h. Alright, now, when we talk about the limiting chord process, we want to find the gradient between two points. So when we're looking at the gradient between two points, we can use a number of formulas. One could be the rise over the run, or we could use the idea of finding y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1. So the limiting chord process here is about finding the gradient at a point. Okay, so let's look at our run there. Now, if we did x plus h take x, we'd be left with h. So our run would be h. Now our rise would be our f of x plus h subtract away our f of x. So let's write that out f of x plus h, subtract away f of x. Alright, now we can start to develop a formula here for the limiting chord process which involves finding the gradient. Now, if we take the f of x plus h minus f of x, which is our rise, and we divide it by our run, which is our h, we can have a formula there that can calculate the gradient between two points. Now we don't want to know the gradient between two points, we actually want to know the gradient at a point. So as our h value gets closer and closer to that point, the h value starts to decrease. In fact, we're looking at when h tends towards zero. So what we're doing is we're looking at finding the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h tends towards zero. And there's our formula that we're going to use to find the gradient at a point. Okay, let's look at using the limiting chord process to find the gradient function. Okay, here's a, here's a type of question that we commonly see. Use limiting chord process to show that the gradient function of f of x equals negative 2x squared is negative 4x. Okay, so we need our formula there. So we want to find the limit of the gradient as h tends towards zero. That'll give us our gradient function. Now what do we need to know? We need to know f of x and we need to know f of x plus h. So let's replace the x with x plus h there. So we've got x plus h squared. Now let's expand this out so we can get it into expanded form to be able to manipulate it a bit better. So again we've got negative 2 x squared plus 2 lots of xh plus h squared. Let's expand out that negative 2 to get negative 2x squared, minus 4xh, and minus 2h squared. Alright, now what do we have? We've got the f of x plus h component of our formula, which we can replace with that, and we can replace f of x with negative 2x squared. Alright, let's go through this process. So let's replace f of x plus h with negative 2x squared, minus 4xh, minus 2h squared, and then remember we're going to then subtract away negative 2x squared. Now, we're dividing that by h and we want to know what happens as h tends towards 0. Now, let's simplify things first. So, two negatives make a positive. We can cancel out minus 2x squared and plus 2x squared, and we can simplify to get negative 4xh minus 2h squared over h as h tends towards 0. Now, we can't divide by 0, so we want to be able to uh, remove that divide by h. So let's factorise to leave us with negative 4x minus 2h. We can then cancel out the h's. When we cancel out those h's, we're left with negative 4x minus 2h. Now, as h goes towards 0 and becomes 0, we remove the minus 2h, so that becomes 0 there. And what are we left with? We're left with negative 4x. Now let's go back to our question. It says, find the gradient function of fx negative 2x squared is negative 4x, which we've done. Alright, let's look at another question. Show that the gradient function of fx 
equals 3x squared plus 2x is 6x plus 2. All right, so let's write down f of x, and let's write down f of x plus h. So replace the x's with x plus h. Here we go. Replace the other x with x plus h. Now again, we've got to expand this out. So going back to our original, we've got x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2 lots of x. It's 2x plus 2 lots of h is 2h. Expand out our bracket there to get 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. We've got on the end there plus 2x plus 2h. There is f of x plus h. Okay, so let's use our rule. We want to find the limit as h tends towards 0. And we want to replace f of x plus h with 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared plus 2x plus h. We then want to subtract away. So there's our f of x plus h component. We want to subtract away f of x. So there's f of x. So let's make sure we put it in brackets. So 3x squared plus 2x. That brackets ensures we follow through our subtract sign there. So let's simplify that. On top, we've still got 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus 3x squared minus 2x. Right, we can subtract and get rid of those 3x squareds. We can also remove those 2x's. We've got positive 2x and minus 2x. Now let's see what we have left. Remember, we're trying to find the limit as h tends towards 0. So we've got 6xh plus 3h squared plus 2h. So let's do it up here. So we're finding the limit as h tends towards 0. Now we've got 6xh plus 3h squared plus 2h all divided by h. So again, we don't want to divide by 0, so can we factorize? Yep, we can pull out a common factor of h, leaving us with 6x plus 3h plus 2. All divided by h, we can cancel away those h's, and we're left with the limit as h tends towards 0 of 6x plus 3h plus 2. Now, when h becomes 0, that disappears, and we're left with 6x plus 2, which is what we're after. All right, fantastic.